Hello, this is Lisa from Wild Eye Embroidery. This tutorial is to show you how to start and end your stitches without using knots. So no matter what pattern you are about to embroider, you'll probably find one of the two scenarios that I'm showing on the screen now. You'll either have a pattern where you have a fairly decent area within the pattern that you can start and stop a stitch, or you will have one like this. This one is simply two straight lines drawn. I can't start or stop outside of those and if you put a knot on the back it will look quite bumpy and you'll probably see it, especially on a pale fabric. So if you're doing this type, skip on to the very end of the video if you wish and I will cover this at the end. But we will make a start with this style. So everybody will have their own technique for starting their embroidery and a lot of people will put a simple knot and start from the bottom and leave that knot at the back. Um, I'm not a big fan of knots, simply because they can lead to tangles on the back of your work which can come through with problems in the front. The other problem is if you're doing a colour change um, close together and an area close together and if you have two knots at the back close together you may find you're trying to get your needle through two knots which is extremely difficult. The technique I prefer is called having a waist knot or an away knot and this is essentially you put a knot in at the start and we will snip this off later so I'll show you how to do that so instead of coming from behind you start from the top now what you want to do is start in an area of your pattern say three quarters of an inch a couple of centimeters away from where you will actually start your first stitch and it needs to be in an area off the pattern so don't be starting outside your pattern so I'll pull this through. Don't tie the knot too tight because we need to snip this off in a minute or two so I'll keep it quite loose. And then I'm going to come over to an area near where I'm starting but not right in the corner and we'll put three stitches in. Now they need to be very tiny and these will essentially anchor the thread in. So there's your first one. And if you can keep them quite close together. Now don't worry about these being visible because we will be stitching over this area. That's two. Three. So what I will do is later on we will get rid of this away knot by snipping it off. But what I want to cover this with stitches first of all just to make things extra secure. In case you were wondering, the stitches I am using here are called the long and short stitch. This is for filling in areas and I do have a separate tutorial on that if you wish to look at it. Now that is my anchor stitch is now covered so now it would be a good time just to snip off that waist knot. Make sure you don't cut your fabric when you're doing that. There's absolutely no chance now of my stitching unravelling because we have covered those anchor stitches. To finish off in an area where you will cover with more stitches later, you will make three small stitches again, just like you did before. These will again act as anchor stitches. This time to finish off, bring your needle through to the front and snip off the floss. So once you have finished stitching in a particular area of the pattern and you need to snip off your thread, I'm going to show you how to do this now, again without a knot. Okay, so now I have flipped the back of my hoop around and we're going to finish off the back of the hoop. So the best way to do that is again not to use a knot and I'm just simply going to weave the needle several times through my stitches and this is enough to secure it. So just be careful that you're not plucking or pulling them when you're doing this and take your time. And once you have finished weaving through your stitches, just simply snip the end of the thread close to your stitches. And as you can see that is all secure now without using any knots. Now we'll try a different method. Um, this is suitable if you have a pattern where you have a gap between your first line or shape and your next one. So in other words, you have an area of dead space where there's no pattern. So you can't use my previous method I've just shown you for that because you don't want to come up from the back or the front and connect to the other line, either in front or behind. That just won't work. 
So we're going to do it slightly differently, but they're still by doing an away stitch. So for this one, I intend to sew from the bottom to the top. So what I will do is same thing again. I've got my knot at the end and I'm going to start through the front and into the back. So I don't want to start at the bottom. So I will go up probably about four or five stitches worth and I will start there. Now again this knot will be coming off in a minute so don't make it too tight. So I want to do a three stab stitches. Now a stab stitch is just a very small stitch but I must keep them in this line, in my pattern line because I'm going to stitch over them in a little minute or two. So to do your first stab stitch you want to come just close to the knot but not too close. So we'll come in from behind and the key to these is make sure they're precisely on the line and keep them really small, small as you can get. So there's the first one. It doesn't matter what stitch you do, I'm simply just doing a, a straight stitch. As long as they're tiny and you keep them on the same line. And take your time just to make sure they're precisely on the line. You don't want wonky stitches because I'll show later. So that is my three tiny stab stitches and now I'll show you how to cover these. So I'm going to start at the bottom. You maybe prefer to work from the top down or left to right, it just doesn't matter as long as you get these covered. I'm going to do a simple back stitch here. And this will cover the stitches. And now that I've covered those, I can snip off my stitch, my knot. And hopefully you can now see that those little stitches are actually covered by my back stitch. Now I'll show you at this stage how to finish this type of one off. You simply flip over to the back and you're going to finish this off by weaving in and out to secure your stitches. Now don't pull too hard. And again if you do this you won't need a knot. And I like just to go through the little loop on the last and pull tight. And now you just have to snip off, so no knots on the back and none on the front. So thanks for watching and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for future videos. Thanks so much, bye bye.